Hey guys, Michelle from Michelle's Craft Corner here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this awesome light up truck card using Stampin' Up's Country Living stamp set and Chibitronics LED circuit lights. Let's get started. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this awesome light up truck card with the headlights that light up. There's a couple other variations you could do on this same card design. If you're not feeling the red truck, you could of course color it in blue. And if you wanted to do some different trees in the background, you could do that as well. Or even do it in green and do the headlights. Ooh, where's the button? There it is. In yellow instead of white. So to make this awesome light up card, we're going to need a couple different things. I kind of mixed it up for this. So of course we're using the truck from the Country Living set. Today I'm using clear, um, but it's also available in wood. It's got nice guitar and boots, so it's a really nice set. For the trees, I'm going to be using the new Rooted in Nature set in clear. Uh, specifically, these little trees right here, I think they're the perfect size. If you prefer, you could also do this big tree. It's what I did for the blue car uh, truck. <laughs> and if you don't have this one, you could also do the lovely as a tree set, uh, which also has some nice trees as well. All right. So besides those, we're going to be using a couple different ink colors today. So of course, the black memento ink to stamp our truck in. The Old Olive ink pad. Now this is the new style ink pad right there. And we're also going to be using the Pool Party. Now this is the old style. I don't have my new one yet. And then we're also going to be using the Returning Mossy Meadow ink pad as well. Okay. So with those, we're also going to be using some sponges for our sky and grass, the old olive and the pool party. We'll be doing a little fussy cutting, so definitely need our paper snips and of course, as always, the multi-purpose liquid glue. We're going to be needing at least three sheets of the Whisper White cardstock cut at five by three and three fourths. I'll stick that right there. Okay. This is for the front and the inside. Okay. We're going to use the one inch circle punch for our little sentiment right there. We're also going to be using the mossy meadow as our card base today. I don't have a post-it note for that one yet either. Uh, a little accent with the wood textured paper, which I just love. And if you're using a lot of it, you'll have a fair amount of little strips. So, very easy to grab. Okay. Making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, of course, the foam adhesive strips. Definitely a go-to for any of the light-up cards. It makes it so much easier. Um, also, we're going to be using some of the linen thread, just as a little accent. It's fine if you're not feeling it, but I, th I think it just kind of adds a little extra pop to the card. And then also we're going to be using a very tiny piece, and when I say tiny, I mean like little bitty bitty square, you'll see in a minute, of the vellum. And so a little goes a long way for this guy. Um, very affordable giant pack. All right think I've got, oh, almost forgot. We're also going to be using the new Stampin' Blends. I am in love, love, love with the blends. Um, if you are not feeling the red truck, as I said, you can do any other color. But for this one, we're mainly needing the uh, red um, combo, the cherry cobbler combo, the crumb cake, and the uh, gray, the uh, smoky slate. Um, if you want, you could also pop in a little bronze or do a little of the old olive if you want to hit some of those trees. But these are the base ones that I'm going to be using for this red truck. If you wanted to do the blue truck instead, I would just switch out the red for the blue. And this is the um, Knight of Navy. Okay. 
Okay, so the last thing, which I'm sure you guys are all wondering about, is the light up components. Now I have a full separate video on light up basics. So if you're not familiar with that, go ahead and check that one out if that's all you're interested in. But we're gonna be using the Chibitronics white lights, these little LED light stickers. They're amazing and so easy to use. You're gonna fall in love with them. They come in a whole variety of colors. So if you wanted to do a different project besides the white, they've got tropical, they've got um, red, yellow, and yes, okay, red, blue, and yellow, which I've used a fair amount of these, <laughs> but very, very affordable, available on Amazon. I'll have all the links in the uh, video below. Besides this, for the light-up component, you're also going to need some copper tape. This is easy peel and stick copper tape. You can get it in big bundles. Uh, also very affordable. I don't have the prices in front of me right now. And then the last thing you're going to need is a tiny battery to power your small circuit. And for that today we're going to be using CR1220s. Uh, these are just a really awesome size. They're very lightweight for a card. Uh, they will last quite well and uh, work well for the uh, pressing mechanism. If you don't have this size, you can do the bigger size, but I have found sometimes they don't um, stay in place as well as the small ones. But as I said, there'll be direct links in the video uh, description below to all of this, so you can check out those direct links and purchase those items on Amazon. I know some of you that may have seen my other videos may be wondering um, about the circuit scribe pen if you wanted to do that instead of the copper tape which you definitely could I'm not going to be doing that one in this particular video because mine is kind of dried out um, but you can check out my basic video and uh, see how to do the circuit for that if you want to use this one instead of the tape okay so I think we got everything covered as I said links to everything are going to be in the description of the video so you can just scroll down and check out all of those so let's go ahead and get started making our card. So I'm going to start with that piece of Whisper White cardstock. Yet again, cut at five by three and three fourths. We're going to go ahead and take our truck right on out here and stick him on a block. Put that over and grab our black memento ink. Now we want to use the memento, especially if we're using the blends, um, and this just kind of uh, keeps it from bleeding. It's made specifically for those alcohol-based markers, so you definitely want to use the memento. If you're not doing the alcohol markers, then you could do um, stays on or archival or something else, but especially for this, definitely want to use the memento. And you could do the stays on with the, the blends, I believe, as well. All right, so we're inking them up, flip them over, and I like to stamp them kind of in the middle or like towards the, slightly towards the bottom. You don't want to necessarily go all the way down because you won't have a lot of room for your circuit. So we're going to go like about there. Give them a nice press. And lift straight up. So there is our truck. Pretty simple. Oh. Oh no. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some speed coloring on this guy. Now if you are not interested in the coloring, you can just kind of fast forward real quick. But I just wanted to show how I do the blends coloring. And that's basically just um, a lot of base coloring with the lighter shade and hitting highlights with the darker shade. So you'll see what I mean here in a second. Let me that's it, the camera.
and there you can see our truck colored. Now I absolutely love the blends markers because they really do make you feel like an artist. Um, all I really did was kind of hit some highlights with the darker tone and then kind of blend it together. So uh, really you play with them and you can really get a good feel for it. Um, if you want to, you can add a little bit of the bronze to the back of the truck just to give it a little bit more of a different wood texture. You may notice that I did not color in the windows or the headlights. We're going to be cutting out holes for the headlights. Uh, windows you can color in if you want. Um, I just kind of liked it just plain. Alright, so now we are done with our coloring. If you did like the coloring section, you can uh, check out. I do have a blends coloring video with the uh, retired birdie set. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our paper snips out. Also, if you rather the blue truck, you just color the same just with the blues instead of the reds. So now we're going to go ahead and take our paper snips and we're going to cut this out. Now, a couple things when you cut it out, you don't want to cut it too low. Keep in mind, we're going to have uh, the battery and the circuitry hiding behind it. So if you cut it too low, you're not going to have enough room uh, when we get to the later step. And you'll see once we get there. So I like to kind of start, uh, do like a little bit of a hill to the back of the where the wood of the truck meets the metal if that makes sense and then we're just going to cut it up and around okay and here's the other section that I want you guys to be aware of. So right here we've got this front headlight. Now you may be tempted to kind of cut down the little front end. You really don't want to do that. Uh, here's one of my earlier examples. So if you cut down the front end, then when we layer it, you have no room to hide your sticker or your uh, copper tape. So what we want to do instead of cutting straight down is we want to do another little hill across. So it can go up, it can go straight out, just kind of anything like that. But you don't want to cut that edge down. Okay, set that little piece aside. All right, so the next thing is we want to go ahead and cut out the little holes for our headlights. Now for this, we're just going to take our paper snips and just kind of go along the edge of the design and just cut out those little circles. So see what I mean. We're just going to kind of follow it. Really simple. And this is the other reason why we did not bother coloring in our headlights because we we're just going to cut out that hole. So if you can see that here, there's a there's now a hole. And then I like to follow along the top of the grill and then cut out the second one. So if you cut along those black lines, it's not as noticeable. I'm just going nice and slow here. Okay, so there we have our two holes. Hopefully you can see those okay, cut out. So did not take very long at all. So now we're going to go ahead and take another one of those uh, pieces that we have cut, then the Whisper White. And yet again, that's cut at five by three and three fourths. And we're going to go ahead and line up our truck right on top. Now they're the same size, so it should match corner to corner pretty easily. And then we're just going to grab a pencil. Doesn't really matter what pencil. And you're going to go ahead and trace, oh, I moved him, trace along the top of the truck. So here we go along the edge. Please excuse my dog barking in the background if that's actually picking up. So tracing along that top edge. And then we're going to do two circles or X's to mark where the headlights are. So this is going to give us proper placement for the battery later. Um, otherwise, it's going to be kind of hard to line it up exactly. Okay, so we take that off. We should have just the outline of the truck and the two dots for where the headlights are going to be. 
Okay. Stick that off to the side. So now I like to just kind of go ahead and sponge my grass real quick, just to go ahead and knock that out. So for that, I'm using the old olive and just a little Stampin' Sponge. Uh, this is the new style ink pad. So if you haven't gotten one of these, they're really easy. Just pop them open like a compact and slide across. All right, so we're just gonna do a little tapping and just kind of tap that grass on. Just like that, really quick, really easy. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could, you know, marker them or do something else, but I just find this is way faster. And just be careful not to uh, ink up your truck. There we go, almost done. So now we have just the grass done. You can just see how quick that was. If you're not feeling the old olive, you could also do the mossy meadow on that as well. Okay, so we'll stick that off to the side. All right, so next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and sponge my sky for the background, and this is with the pool party. If you don't have pool party, you could also uh, use any other wonderful shade of blue. But I just like the light tone of the pool party, kind of very subtle sky. So yet again, just a little light sponging across the top. Not even sure how well that's going to show up in camera. It's very light. And I'm sorry if I just shook the camera. There we go. And with this one, you can go uh, below your guidelines if you need to. We're going to be erasing those later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so there we go. Got our sky done, so nice light shade of blue. Off to the side. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and stamp our trees real quick. Now these are yet again with the Rooted in Nature set, and I absolutely love that there's the set of two and then also the... Oh, in the camera, uh, the set of two and also the single one. So just depending on um, which one you prefer. But for this one, I'm gonna use just the set of two. I'll grab a block here real quick. Ooh, that's a very dirty block. Let's get a clean block, okay. So there we go, we got him. And we're gonna do the mossy meadow, which just kind of ties into our card base. So uh, stamping for this guy, now keep in mind we've got our guideline. So if you put them up too high, you don't want them to look like they're floating in the sky. <laughs> so I recommend kind of stamping them a little lower so you're just seeing the tops of the trees. It's kind of like the truck is sitting on a hill. So we're just gonna stamp that down, just like that. And then you can also stamp it a second time, kind of get that off stamped color if you want, just like that. And we're just going to kind of just do a couple trees just all along that skyline. And you can add more or less. Like I said, with this guy, if you just want to do a single tree, you can do that too. Lots of, lots of options there. Okay. There we go. All right. So then you can kind of line up your truck and just see how it looks if you kind of like the look of it. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we'll move that off to the side. Okay, so we're done with the trees, there we go. Okay, so now on to the next fun part. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut a tiny, tiny strip of that vellum now, when I said tiny, I was not joking, so I'll just show you how, how tiny we're talking here. Alright, so this is a piece that is one inch by one and a half currently, and you could probably get away with even smaller. Actually, I might trim this. So we're going to flip it over, and you want to glue it, and I know we've still got my numbers on here, so that might be kind of tricky to see. But you're going to want to 
There we go. We'll stick it on this side so you can see it a little bit. You want to glue it to where you are covering both of your headlights. And you also want the glue to not kind of get on the actual headlight part. So we're going to do a dot of glue in the center and then to either edge. But you can see even this particular piece is a little bigger than what I really need. Um, now this also is going to help keep that cut, you know, that cut that we made right here uh, from moving. So it'll hold it steady and kind of hide the fact that we did that cut. All right, so I'm going to grab my multi-purpose liquid glue and do my little dots. And then just place this guy straight down. Okay, so now we have just kind of that frosted window look. I know it may be hard to see in the camera, uh, but this just adds more realism to the headlight effect. All right, and you definitely want to be marking your headlight location before putting the vellum on there. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Did that mistake too. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the fun circuitry part. Yay! All right, so for this, we only need one battery. So we're just going to go ahead and grab one of these guys out here yet again. This is the CR1220. So it's a very small little battery, easily lost on a craft space. So do be careful. So there we go. There's our little battery. And then we're going to need two of these wonderful white LED lights. So I'm going to go ahead and open this new pack here. Okay, come on. Oh, oh no, sorry. Okay, so these, let me slide them out here. Okay, so these come with this nice little protective plastic sheet that kind of keeps them in place. Peel this back here. Keeps them in place in their little wells. And then we've got a set of three lights, but we're only going to need two. So put that there and cover it back up so none of them go flying anywhere. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to need is the copper tape. Uh, this roll is at kind of the end of its rope, but we have plenty here to do this card. So. So first thing we're going to start off with, so, and you may or may not be able to see my lines now that I have stamped. So let me make this edge a little darker so you can see here. I'll erase it in a second, but. Okay, hopefully maybe that's a little easier to see. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so there basically is the guideline right here. So when we're making our spot for our battery, we don't wanna be higher than this guideline, otherwise it's gonna show up. Uh, same thing for the rest of the truck. We don't wanna place any of our components where they're gonna be seen and kind of spoil the fun. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is take this corner. Now, if you've seen the Light Up Lighthouse card, it's gonna be kind of similar to that one. We're gonna take it and we're gonna fold uh, this corner just straight across just like that kind of at a good 90 degree angle now you can go smaller but you do need to make sure that it is big enough that it will cover your battery okay just like that okay so we're good now i'm going to draw this out let's do it in a nice bright color dark i'll do it in black okay so hopefully you guys can see this. Now you don't have to draw these lines when you're doing yours, but I'm just doing so you guys can see as I put it together here. So this is, oh, okay. Very messy battery placement, but you'll get the idea. Hold on. So, and if this helps you, you can definitely draw this before laying your lines as well. Okay, so we've got our spot where our battery is going to sit. Now the battery has two sides. It has a positive and a negative side. Generally the side that has the words is gonna be positive and it'll have a little positive mark on it. Okay. So 
our negative side is going to sit right here and positive side is going to be right here. So when it sits, that's the sides that touch. Okay. And then from here, we're going to do our circuit lines. Now the circuit lines are supposed to run parallel. They're not supposed to touch or cross. Now we have our spots where, let me make that a little darker. Okay. We have our spots where our headlights are going to go. This is kind of our goal for where those lines are going to go. So we're going to do one line from the negative side and it's just going to go along the top of that battery. Now keep in mind where your pencil mark is. You don't want your guideline or your copper tape to be above that. And then same thing with our positive line. We're going to draw that and it's going to get placed just below. So our batteries are going to, or excuse me, our LED um, GBtronics lights are going to sit right in the middle and it's gonna go like this, these little triangles right here. So the point of the triangle is the negative side. I don't know if you guys can see that. And the base of it is the positive, just like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, let me put it close to the camera here. Okay. And I know this is a very messy drawing, but hopefully you guys will see as we put it together here in a second. Okay. And then you want to leave your two um, ends of your circuit lines just open like that. So yet again, they don't touch. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and grab that copper tape. Now this stuff works really well. It's just kind of a peel and stick. So you're going to peel the backing off and just stick it down. Now these are not going to be perfectly straight lines because of where I placed them, but you can curve the tape a little bit, or uh, if you're not liking it, you can tear it and lay on top. So we'll show you both. So here we go. We're going to want to start your copper tape on the circle, kind of, you know, cut right through it if you can. And then we're going to follow our guideline. Kind of peeling that, hopefully you guys can see this, ah, peeling that backing as you go. So following that guideline, peeling that backing. So I'm just kind of curving it a little bit. And then when I get to the end, kind of as far as I need it to go, you can just use uh, your fingernail and just tear it. It's very thin. Um, there you go. Just like that. Okay. And then I also like to use either the bone folder or just the back of my fingernail and just give it a good rub down to kind of flatten it out a little. Okay, so we've got one line down. Now we're going to go ahead and do our second line with our positive side. So just like that. Okay. And for the sake of example, I mean, I can curve this up, but I want to show you guys too, as I drop a pin on the floor, that say you're not liking the line, you can tear it and covering the thing and just place on top. So if you're having issues with your lines being straight or where you need them to be, you can always cut and replace. Okay. The other thing too is you don't want these to be too far apart. Keep in mind how the size of our light. So if they're too far apart, then the light can't touch both of the lines. So you, if you can see on here, uh, hopefully, it's, okay, you've got the little metal tip and the little metal base. The copper lines need to touch both corners. So you need the negative to touch the negative uh, tip and the positive to touch the the bottom right there so you don't want them too far apart if your little lights aren't twinkling that may be one of your problems so just throwing that out there all right so that's probably good Ta -da. all right all right and then we're going to go ahead and rub that down real quick all right so now we have our lines done we're going to go ahead and carefully peel off our little stickers here. Uh, 
Oh, they're fairly forgiving, but you don't want to bend them in half or anything. Okay. And you also don't want to try, try not to touch the adhesive too much as I am doing. Okay. So we're going to stick the first one. Uh, trying The light is actually that little center square. So if you can, it's best to try to aim that right about where your dot is. We're going to place it down. That copper, just like that. And then do the same thing with our second one. And you can put them pretty close together. Okay. And I always like to be sure to give a good press on both tips just to make sure that it's sitting on there flat. Now we're going to go ahead and test our light. We're going to stick our battery right on there and then fold over our little copper and see if they light up. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. So if it lights up, that means you did it right. Congratulations, you have a completed circuit. If it does not light up, I recommend checking some of the troubleshooting things. Uh, one is both of your copper lines touching either side of the battery. Are your lights sitting to where they're touching both uh, sides? And also, you know, you know, that little extra press sometimes can make a huge difference. All right, so once you have this all ready to go, we're going to go ahead and grab our foam adhesive strips. Now these are absolutely awesome for this kind of project because we want to uh, create a well to hold that battery in place. Uh, if it moves or shifts, then that can also affect how well your light is going to light up. If we don't have the power, it won't light up. So what I like to do is just uh, take that foam adhesive strip and just cut some little sections. You don't really, it's a tiny battery, so you don't need a lot of this. And we're just going to hold the battery in place and just kind of build around it with those little foam adhesive strip pieces. Just to make sure it is not going anywhere. And you can put the foam adhesive strips on top of the copper tape. It will not affect the conductivity at all. So if you're worried about that, don't be. All right, so after you have the little pieces around there, we're gonna test it one more time just to make sure that nothing slipped or moved because uh, once you seal it, it's kind of hard to adjust. Those foam strips are just a teeny bit higher than the battery. So because they're a little bit higher, uh, it won't make the connection until you press. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and peel the backings of those off. So, and then give it a little gentle press. You don't want to press too hard because you don't want it to be, you know, making contact the whole time. And then give it a test. Awesome. So now we have our basic circuit all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and grab our car back out, line it up and kind of give it that little test. So depending on how far over you did your fold, you may have to adjust and just kind of see where your pressure point is going to be. It looks like it's still about where this back tire is. Okay, so there you go, ta-da. Just like that. So now we're gonna to continue to put our card together so because we have the foam strips here, this little section is a little higher than the rest of the card. So what I like to do is just continue with a few extra foam adhesive strips so that it's all nice and level with the truck. Otherwise, it's just going to have um, be a little off. So we're just going to cut a couple extra little strips doesn't have to be perfect, but this is just so that truck sits nice and even. Make sure I didn't put that. 
Okay, the other thing too is if your uh, pencil lines are noticeable, which they aren't super in this one, uh, you want to go ahead and erase those before gluing the truck down, uh, just because they're kind of hard to erase after with the truck in the way. Okay, there we go, got that good. So now I'm going to peel that back. This also kind of protects your lights as well from getting smished. Okay, I'm gonna line that back up. A little press. Check. Let's see if my lights are still good. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue constructing the rest of our card. So, yet again, we've got our mossy meadow card base ready to go. Now, for the sentiment, I used the Just For You that is also in the Rooted in Nature set. It's just a really nice size and fits perfectly in that one inch circle punch. So remember that scrap piece that we cut off the top of the car? This is perfect for just stamping this guy on. And I actually, I think I stamped this one in the Early Espresso, but... You could also do it in Mossy Meadow. I think I forgot to mention that. So we'll just stamp him real quick. Boom, just like that. Okay, And then grabbing our one inch circle punch, line it up, centered, punch him out. See, so you could do a few more with that scrap too. And I also sponged the edge of that with that brown as well. But I think for this one, I'm just going to do a little old olive because he's handy. So here we go. But you don't have to sponge it, but I think it gives it a little pop. That's a little off center, but we're going to go with it. All right. So the other thing that I did, this off the side, is I had the linen thread. There it is and kind of wrapped it around as just kind of a fun decorative accent. So if you want to do that, this is the time to do that piece. So we're going to take it, take our little sentiment off. And anytime I'm doing ribbon or thread, I really like to kind of cheat. And I say it's a cheat just because it feels like a cheat. And just grab a little scotch tape and just tape it down. It's way easier. And then we're gonna wrap it three times. So we're gonna go one, and just kind of crisscrossing it a little bit, two, and three. I kind of want my crisscross to be about where my dot's gonna be. Okay. Flip it back over, snip, and Tape. Okay, so now we have our linen thread on there, good to go. And now we're going to go ahead and double check where our pressure point is. Now for this particular one, it's right here, just below the tire. So that's where I'm going to put my sentiment, so that whoever receives this will know where to press. <laughs> so we're going to take a uh, Stampin' Dimensional. You can use either the mini or the regular size, it doesn't really matter. And peel and stick that to the back. And be sure to place that. Okay, I'm scooting my thread up here. So we want to place it where the thread is on either side. I probably should have done the sentiment and then wrapped the thread around it. That would have been easier, but. All right, so we get the idea. Yep, Let me just double check again. There we go, we got a good, good placement. We are good to go. All right, so the last detail I did on this card is just a little touch of this gorgeous wood texture designer series paper. I am in love with it. I think it's kind of cool if you can kind of match whatever texture the wood of your truck is to um, 
the wood piece for the backing of your car. So this one I kind of did a little light, so maybe that one. But really, any of them, they all just look gorgeous with this. They really do. Actually, I like that one better. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and take that piece and just lay it on our card, glue it down, and give it a little trim. Uh, if you want an exact size, I think this is about, uh, yep, a little shy of two inches, and our card itself lengthwise is four and a quarter. So if you wanted to go ahead and pre-cut that, you could. Okay. And if you don't like the straight up, you could do like a cross as well. A lot of different ways you could do this. It would still look awesome. Okay. And then I just like to flip it over and just trim that excess off. This is just because I had this piece already ready to go. There we go. So there we go. We've got our base. And we're just going to add our truck right on top of it. So flipping that over. So yet again, we've got that little spot that is not the same height as the rest. So if you want, you can also do another little piece of dimensional strip just on that so it doesn't kind of flap. But the rest of this is just easy to just add our multipurpose liquid glue. Just give it that little bit of edge all the way around. And there we have it. A cool light up truck card that anybody would be excited to get. And the Just For You is a very good all occasions. Uh, with that extra piece of Whisper White, we would just stick it in the inside to have a spot to write on. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I appreciate you having patience with me as I know it's been a while since I've done one. Uh, these do take longer than my regular videos. So if you do like my projects, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Yet again, all the direct links to uh, purchase the products seen in the video are going to be in the video comments below. Uh, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you later.